the human genome is the most human thing we possess. And this generation will have the responsibility for the stewardship of it. They will make deliberations about whether or not to make changes in it, whether or not to predict futures from it. This generation has the responsibility to protect and to understand and to intervene on the most human thing that we possess in common. It's an awesome responsibility. PBS presents Ken Burns with a new two-part documentary series with Pulitzer Prize winning author Siddhartha Mukherjee, The Gene, An Intimate History. And the good doctor joins me right now. Good morning. Jeff, hi. Well, doctor, we have only six minutes this morning and uh, for a subject matter that would need an entire college course to understand. Getting beyond a college course now because it is now um, the, the, the topic on everyone's minds is, you know, how do we use genetics to tackle coronavirus? Now, the two part documentary series, The Gene and Intimate History, is based on a book you wrote that took you a good six years. The Gene uh, and Intimate History came out in 2016. It's a history of, 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 of the gene um, and the birth of, of human genetics. Um, it, it, you know, the first part of the book is uh, uh, the history, how we discovered the gene and its, its uses and misuses in Nazi eugenics and American eugenics. The second part of the book has to do with uh, questions about how we use genes and gene editing in the future um, and what the challenges ethical are and otherwise are, technological are, and how we can use genes to potentially create a whole generation of new medicines uh, against uh, uh, diseases. The film is very different. The film is more of a, uh, the film has more personal characters in it. It has um, personal stories of people who've been affected by genetic diseases and how new treatments are being used uh, to save their lives. Uh, it also, of course, has elements of history and goes into some of the ethical challenges that I discussed before uh, with uh, gene editing. Now, documentary filmmaker Ken Burns is best known for jazz and the Civil War and baseball. How did the subject matter of gene and intimate history come about? Well, Ken, Ken and I have uh, collaborated before on another documentary called Cancer, The Emperor of All Maladies. We felt that this was not just a scientific story. This was an American story, and this was a, a story in the world. Uh, it was a story about the world. Um, and we've seen this right now. It's a story, you know, as I said, uh, it's a story circulating through the world. So. Ken is, has a broad mind, has a broad intellect. Uh, he's a historian, he's a documentarian, but he's also you know, interested in how science intersects with the world. So uh, this is the second collaboration I had with Ken and it's been an incredible success. Um, I, 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 I hope everyone watches it, but uh, for me personally, uh, working with Ken has been one of the highlights of my life. A doctor, I've seen 60 Minutes and a lot of news programs that talk about gene therapy and fighting cancer. How far along are we using the body's own self-defenses to combat cancer? Um, well, it's uh, for blood cancers, it's very far, far along. So, you know, uh, we are uh, really curing some blood cancers in children using these kinds of gene therapies, uh, altering immune cells. For solid tumors, such as lung or breast cancer, um, we're still struggling to figure out why these immune cells uh, are having a hard time killing the cancer, but we'll figure, uh, I'm very confident in the next 10 years, we'll figure out uh, exactly how to use these gene therapies to, uh, to create uh, new ways of curing cancer. I should also say that, um, that aside from altering our own immune cells, we're also using uh, techniques, uh, antibodies, that will uh, remove the cloaks from cancer cells and, and kill, kill cancers. And those have been very successful. These are also produced using genetic techniques. And those have been very successful in some solid tumors, such as melanomas um, and, um, and other cancers. So on every front, we're using genetics to try to cure cancer, understand cancer, understand the risk of cancer um, uh, in virtually every way. Now, we've seen the examples of abuse of gene therapy in China, for example, and this technology moves so fast, has the law been able to keep up with it, ethics-wise? Well, we're making, you know, because the technology moves so fast, we, uh, we're, we're almost running behind the technology to create the laws. Um, the film begins with uh, shocking footage, uh, which everyone should watch, of a Chinese scientist getting up to the podium and announcing that he's made two designer babies, babies in which he's edited the human genome, 
Um, and so uh, very soon we learned, right from the beginning, we learned that this technology on one hand can be used to create incredible medicines, but on the other hand, can also be used to create um, uh, ethical challenges. And uh, as, a, as, a, as a really, as an international group, we're trying to figure out uh, how to regulate this the best way, who these technologies should be used uh, for, and under what circumstances we can start making changes in the human embryo. Is it safe? Is it clear? Is it, you know, under what extraordinary suffering should these technologies be used? Um, so uh, there are laws, uh, laws are being created, um, and uh, they hopefully will be international. Um, but we're, we're, you know, this is a work in progress. Now, doctor, everyone is, is worried about this pandemic and the coronavirus, uh, and everyone's looking forward to a vaccine. And they say that's the only way that society will become normal again. But this can't be rushed. Vac vaccines take time. Well, making vaccines takes time because you have to test the vaccine. You can't just release it on, on people. Um, before vaccines, you know, we'll, be, we'll have medicines and uh, hopefully antibodies, uh, cocktails of antibodies that, will, that we can give to sick patients. Again, uh, these cocktails of antibodies will be used, it will be made using genetic techniques. Um, uh, I would say that uh, the first of those will be out in, in June. Uh, for the vast public, uh, you know, we have, a, I have a real plea, I've been writing about this in, the, uh, in a piece in the New Yorker and an, another piece will come out soon. Um, for the vast public, this is a time to, uh, to really listen, to coordinate and, 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 and help uh, the medical workers who are desperate in the front lines trying to treat the hundreds of thousands of patients who are afflicted uh, with coronavirus. Well, doctor, thank you so much for talking to me today and thank you for your dedication and best of luck with your new series. Thank you so much. You can catch The Gene and Intimate History on PBS. And for more reviews and interviews, just surf on over to my website at VegasFromCritic.com. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard in Las Vegas. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.